Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Minchev, and it's the weekend, and that means time for another drought update. We had some rain uh, recently. It was a, a decent amount of rain at Sacramento Executive Airport, just over a quarter of an inch of rain, when average for the month of September is less than a tenth of an inch. So again, a, a decent amount. It wasn't a lot of rain. Uh, unfortunately, we kind of, it was a little too spotty to get a lot of rain, but some areas actually uh, saw some decent rain. Davis saw over an inch of rain during the latest rain event. So we're above average for the month, good news, but below average, uh, just about an inch and a quarter uh, on the water year, which is October 1st to September 30th, which if, you know, calendar is about to turn over to October. So that water year is also about to turn over. Uh, but that doesn't mean we're doing any better with the drought. I mean, just because the water year turns over doesn't mean, hey, we're back to zero again in terms of drought. Statewide precip uh, on this water year again from October 1st to September 30th of this year, uh, over 16 and a half inches in Sacramento, over 18 inches in San Francisco, 19 inches in Redding. That sounds like, you know, we're doing pretty good, almost 20 inches uh, in South Lake Tahoe. But if you put on uh, the departure from average numbers were all below average all across the state of California. Uh, I mean, Reading over 13 and a half inches below where they should be on the water year. San Francisco, Sacramento, both about an inch below. South Lake Tahoe, uh, about uh, half an inch below, so not too bad, all things considered. Uh, but I mean, Stockton, Fresno, three and four inches below, respectively. So we need the rainfall. With a little bit we got, obviously, helps. I mean, we'll take any rain we can get, but it really didn't make an impact in the drought map. You might be thinking, wow, this looks really familiar, and it it's exactly the same as it was last week. There was no change, not even a fraction of a percent change in the severe, extreme, or exceptional drought category. So, again, the map looks uh, exactly as it did the previous week, uh, especially in the San Joaquin Valley, still dealing with that exceptional drought category. We always talk about we want more rain. We need more rain, not all at once, hopefully, because then that leads to other issues. Uh, but rain in general is a good thing. In La Nina years, we typically don't see additional rainfall or a lot of additional rainfall. Uh, it, it's typically a near average year and their forecasting. The National Forecasting Centers are looking at yet another La Nina winter. So that means cooler waters off the coast of Central America, South America and Mexico was well. Stronger trade winds pushing the warmer water out. And that means a pretty average kind of 50 50 uh, toss up, if you will, in terms of uh, precipitation uh, in our part of California. You go a little bit further north in California, closer towards that that uh, state line with Oregon, even up towards Washington, typically a wetter winter uh, in La Nina years, drier though from central down to southern California, down into Mexico. So again, drier for south of us, wetter just to the north of us. We're kind of right in between there in those La Nina winters. And again, it is expected to be another La Nina winter. So it's really not a surprise when we look at the three month temp or precipitation outlook, uh, October, November, December, that, well, guess what? We're right in that average area uh, in our region. It could be worse. I mean, we could be in that likely drier area for Southern California. I mean, a uh, Southern Nevada, even in towards Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Colorado looking like it will definitely be a, a drier next three months. Here in Northern California, we'll take the average. It means we might see a little bit of rain, but we likely won't see excessive amounts uh, of rainfall here. But in terms of rain, it helps not just, you know, we like the rain, it smells good, but it also helps to replenish the reservoirs. And that's a big deal out here. I, I mean, obviously we all know, you and I, that uh, the reservoirs, that's where we get a lot of our water. So Shasta, Oroville, Folsom, three of the big ones, uh, all in that 30% range in terms of how much water is in them when typically we would see up over about 60% or more in those three reservoirs. But the reservoirs aren't the only thing that's important. I mean, lakes and groundwater as well, snowpack, rainfall, all that stuff helps to refill reservoirs, lakes, and groundwater. Uh, we typically overuse groundwater uh, in a lot of ways, and the San Joaquin Valley especially is, is used to this conversation because they've seen the ground actually sinking as we continue to pull groundwater uh, out, so literally water out of the ground. But one expert we talked to from the Regional Water Authority, uh, he was suggesting that maybe more responsible and thoughtful use of groundwater could actually help us uh, in times of drought more so than rain could in some instances. The rain that we're experiencing helps a little bit to take the edge off. And I hope that people have turned off their sprinklers and let Mother Nature do the watering for them. However, lifting us out of the drought emergency would likely take record precipitation at this time somewhere uh, on the order of what it took us out of the last drought from 2012 to 2016. This year, the Sacramento region was fortunate that most of the rain and snow fell within our watershed. 
we made the most of that by banking water underground in the aquifer during the wet times this winter so that it was available for the dry times later on in the summer. We'll do more of that and utilize our groundwater aquifer, the reservoir you can't see, but is under your feet to get us through continued dry years. And residents will continue to play an important role by conserving water and stopping waste. And that underground aquifer is key. Pfeiffer says we need to expand our utilization of underground water storage in California. We are really interested in uh, increasing underground storage uh, to store water that provides benefits to both Northern and Southern California, provides benefits to the environment, uh, helps with our, uh, our, our species, including uh, salmon, which uh, are going to be hit hard in the future by uh, climate change and droughts and increasing temperatures. State of California, there's 50 million acre feet of developed surface storage, surface water storage reservoirs altogether. Their capacity is 50 million acre feet. The State Department of Water Resources suggests that there's on the order of a billion acre feet available for, for groundwater banking and recharge. Um, we really need to develop that opportunity in order to make sure that we have the water supply needed for California's future economy. What we would like to do is, is when there is plentiful surface water, we should be utilizing that. And uh, uh, we should allow our groundwater basins to recharge when that's happening. And then when there isn't much surface water available, we should be utilizing groundwater. So I am focused on uh, groundwater recharge and uh, groundwater as an adaptation measure uh, to help us ensure that we have water supply in the future in the face of climate change. Responsibly managing our use of groundwater is especially important as climate change worsens. One example of this is snowpack in the Sierra. Typically, the snowpack melts gradually over the spring and summer months, giving us some surface water to use in those months that are typically pretty dry. But with a warming climate, more snow is expected to fall as rain instead, and what snow does fall won't stick around as long. So catching and storing the rain without causing flooding, it's going to be a challenge. But it's one Pfeiffer says could be helped by storing that water in the ground and saving it. We have the capacity under our feet for 1.8 million acre feet of storage. That's nearly twice the size of Folsom Reservoir. We can do it. And uh, we can provide benefits to the residents of our region, uh, make sure that we have a robust economy and, and protect our environment. Um, but it will take uh, uh, the construction of, of infrastructure uh, to do that. So we can, we can do more and provide even benefits beyond this region uh, uh, to the state of California.